Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another canister filter from a German manufacturer. This one is the Tetra EX1200 Plus. So the 1200 in the name relates to the flow rate, that is 1200 litres per hour. And remember that's the maximum flow without anything in the filter and without any pipes attached and all that. So 1200 might end up being about 750 by the time it comes back to the tank and it's all set up properly. Still a reasonable flow. And 1200 litres is 315 US gallons. So at a maximum this would pump 315 US gallons. Probably near 60% uh, of that in real world situation. Now Tetra say that this filter is suitable for between 200 and 500 litres which is approximately 53 US gallons to 132 US gallons. And really considering the actual size of it that doesn't seem like much. Then They don't seem to be making outrageous claims there. We'll take it apart, see what's in it, assess that and see what we can do to possibly improve it. Okay, that's the filter there. It's got an EU plug, but it does come with a UK adapter. You basically just plug this into the back of a UK plug and then plug that into your socket. So that's all good. It's got a priming switch on top of here, like pretty much all canister filters do. And these clasps are pretty good. I remember taking a look at one of these when they first came out when I had my aquarium store many, many years ago and I wasn't impressed by it at all. This is the plus version of that filter and it seems to have addressed a lot of the points that I was really worried about which was really the, the quality of construction. So I hope that they've also made the improvements to what's inside here as well as far as the media goes and the foam layout because I remember the, the layout of these things being absolutely terrible and I used to say to people I cannot understand how they've managed to balls it up as badly it's like a blind chimpanzee's put it together hopefully this one will be better it's certainly better made than the earlier versions that's a really strong clasp yeah, it's just a nice robust filter That's the pump head, pretty much just like any other canister filter pump head. Water comes down here, travels, where are we? Travels down a central pipe here, all the way to the bottom before rising up through all of our trays and being sucked out by the pump and returned to the tank. Okay, we'll bring the camera in. I'll pull this apart and I'll explain exactly what is in here. Right, so the top tray. Got a nice strong cover on it to stop anything being drawn up into the pump. That is good. And we've got the usual problem here. We've got the fine pad on the very top. That is going to ensure that all of the fine muck gets concentrated in our filter media, making it ineffective and pretty much useless. That is definitely going to come out. Seems like a reasonably decent quality pad, so we will use it again. And underneath that fine pad, we've got two bags of carbon. They're in mesh bags. They're obviously in plastic at the moment. That plastic needs to be taken off before you use it. They're going to come out for the time being. And then underneath that, we've got a coarse pad which seems like a strange place to have it because this is the top basket. That's what's going to be taking the water last. We won't be using that in the top tray. That instantly frees up the top tray. Right, next tray down, we've got some bio balls. And I've never understood why these things are called bio balls because they hold very little biological material. They're basically plastic. As a filter media, they're absolutely hopeless at supporting bacteria. They will come out. Right, next tray down. We've got one, two thick coarse pads. 
I'm not quite sure what function they are going to serve. Possibly to support bacteria, but they are extremely coarse. Look at that. That frees up that tree. And our bottom tree actually feels very heavy. And in here, we have another coarse pad. And some really, really poor ceramic rings. And we'll reuse them in the bottom of the filter. That'll help to settle the muck out nicely. I think they are actually there to settle the muck out and catch heavy material before it hits the foams. So they're not pretending that these are for bacteria. Okay, so that's what comes in it. Let's get it put back together in a more sensible way. Right, so straight off the bat, we can open up this bag, tip all of them into here. That is our primary settlement. fit in there pretty well we've got the whole bag in there so the idea behind that is the water comes down swills around inside of here this settles out the heavy muck and then the water rises up through our trees right so that enables us to start on this bottom tray bottom tray will have a coarse pad some of these are more coarse than others this one is slightly less coarse so I'm actually going to put that one in the bottom of the bottom tree. Like so. Followed by a medium density pad that I've just cut from an ordinary pond foam with bumps on. The bumps will face downward for maximum surface contact area. Like that. And then, where's our fine pad? Uh, I lost the fine pad. Hey, oh, there he is, on the floor. And then we're going to put the tetra fine pad that was on the very top of the top tray into the top of our bottom tray. Like so. Now, effectively, what that has done, once we drop this in, that's ensured that all of our mechanical filtration, that is to make the water clear, to remove all the particulates, that has been done in the bottom part of the filter. So water comes down through that tube in the middle of the trays, into the bottom, in those rings, that settles out the heavy muck, and then it hits coarse, medium, fine pad. Water's clean before it hits our media. Now currently, that is our biological media and we can do a hell of a lot better than that so I'm going to tip these plastic balls out and possibly use them in the future in another filter down in the bottom to catch heavy muck because they do a really good job of that in fact I'm just wondering whether these would do a better job than the rings yes I think they would right that's the rings out Now we've got a layer of balls in the bottom of there. I'll just let you have a look at one of those. And you can see that is going to trap quite a lot of heavy muck. And that's good because that is our primary settlement in the bottom of there. Right, that leaves us with three trays. Our foam trays just gone back in there. And I've just pre-measured one of these. And in each tray we can get approximately 1.5 kilos of Biohome Ultimate because the goal with this filter is to make it into something that is extremely efficient and not a nitrate factory. I can say with the way it came set up with all that plastic in it would have just been a total nitrate factory. You probably wouldn't have had a problem with ammonia and nitrite. Nitrate would have been through the roof. This filled with the Biohome Ultimate one, two, 
three trays of it, so four and a half kilos, is gonna do a hell of a job on ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Now, of course, you don't have to use the Biohome Ultimate, you can use Mini Ultra. That's just basically the same stuff, but without trace elements. This has got added trace elements, so it sets up very fast with bacteria. You could put bio gravel in there, and if you wanted to step outside the bio home range, you could pretty much put whatever you want in. We're going with that because it's such a consistent product, and we know it supports aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. That will allow us to predict what size of tank this particular filter will be suitable for, for a normal stock and a heavy stock. And I'll get to those figures in a moment. Too much media in the trays but in this instance it's just right okay I'll just quickly run through what we've got spare one two three extremely coarse foams of various thicknesses a few of the plastic balls two bags of carbon all of the really hard, pretty cheap ceramic rings. And 4.5 kilos of Biohome Ultimate equates to just under 10 pounds for you guys in the US. Now that isn't much less than the likes of a Sunsun Sun 304, or a 704, or a... Oh, what's that big lad called, man? Or a Fluval fx5 or fx6 takes so this holds quite a lot of media now as far as creating a full cycle and processing ammonia nitrite and nitrate goes getting 4.5 kilos or roughly 10 pound of media in there means that this filter should provide a full cycle for a tank of approximately 450 liters or 118 US gallons if it's normally stocked or around 225 litres or 59 US gallons if it's heavily stocked and a heavily stocked tank would be something like a goldfish tank, a cichlid tank, predator tank and also a marine tank as well. Marine needs that little bit more media to deliver that full cycle because bacteria doesn't really want to grow in marine water because of all the salts and mineralization. So that's pretty impressive given the price of this thing. I'll put a link to it in the video description if you want to check it out. It is a well-made filter. It does hold a lot of media. And Tetra are pretty good on the after-sales service as well because, as I say, when I had the shop, we used to deal with Tetra. We dealt with them for about 20 years and they were always pretty good. Now, if you wanted to use one or both of these bags of carbon that come with the filter, they would go in the top of the top tray because you would generally try and get your filter working mechanical, biological, then chemical, so that your chemical media was operating in the cleanest possible water. That makes it last longer. And although Tetra say this should be replaced every five to six weeks or something, you should be able to get seven to eight weeks out of your carbon, so roughly two months. Now I have to thank Gary for sending me this thing, and when it arrived, I was fully expecting to pull it apart and read through what Tetra says on the box and then go on some mad rant about not having to change your filter media every six months, which is what they used to recommend. They don't recommend that now. They say it'll last for a long time, just rinse it as necessary in tank water. That is the right advice. Unfortunately, using the plastic balls doesn't allow for much bacteria, but at least they're given the right advice now with regard to the changing of the filter media. As far as I know, there's no companies now currently recommending replacing all the biological media every six months. But up until very recently, there was two, possibly three, of the very big companies out there recommending just that. And given that good media can take up to six months to mature, with enough bacteria to do a good job in your filter, you don't want to be throwing it out after six months of use. 
So in summary, yes, good filter, recommended, holds plenty of media. Check it out in video description and in pinned comment. And if you've got a filter that hasn't been featured in this series yet, that you would like me to take a look at, by all means get in touch. Again, contact details in video description and in pinned comment. Email and phone number. Phone's the best one because I'll answer that. You know, if I hear the phone, I answer it. Emails, I'll get to as soon as I can. It might take a day or two if I'm extremely busy, which I have been recently. But those two methods, email, phone, best way to get hold of me. Don't worry about phoning me either because there's a lot of people, they, they send emails and I'm like, just phone me, you know, just phone me. You've got a lot of questions. Just phone me. I'll be able to sort the problems out. And I, oh, I didn't think you would answer the phone. But I'm nothing special. You know, my channel relatively is small. I can take phone calls at any time during the day. Obviously between nine and five when I'm actually working is better. But anytime, if you want to phone, just phone me anytime. If I hear the phone, I will answer it. That's the best way to talk something through. Because it's getting increasingly difficult to answer comments on uh, YouTube and so on. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos out there. A lot of them are educational, so there's a lot of people want to ask questions on there. Sometimes I don't get the notifications. I might miss them. If you phone me, if I miss the call, at least it'll show up as a missed call and I'll call you back. Providing you're in the UK. If you're in Australia or something, it might cost me a fortune to phone you. So there you go. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it on websites, group pages, forums, wherever you want to share it with anybody who you think might benefit from seeing it. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching.